visual storytelling is related to what is becoming now the main connection of the human all together, everywhere. The language of the images is becoming universal language, and this is what, for years actually, I was trying to bring up together, is how I could bring images to connect the humanities together. Working for many, many years, traveling all around the world, uh, as publishing in National Geographic, these are some of my works, and you see that this is all related to the humanities and the human stories. Or for many other publications, I have been for the past 35 years more in the war zones and the front lines and the conflict zone and refugee camps than in my home Paris or here. So all this brought me to think about the many big issues, and one of them obviously is the poverty. But where I have seen the poverty? I have seen poverty in the feet of this old 75 years old man that walking kilometers in Baluchistan for their daily lives, but he is walking in the near the biggest gas plant of his countries, and that's what he got. I have seen the poverty in the hands of this old Uyghur man in the places which was used called Eastern Turkestan in China, and now it's called Xinjiang. Uh, but he's also working in the land which is full of the oils and gold and jades. But this is what he got from his land. I have also seen in the hands of this Afghan refugees that taking the food which was given by the humanitarians, and he was just one to show me the quality of what he's getting. But what I saw in his hand, it was the history of the humanities, of the suffering, the geography of the suffering in each part of his hand I have seen. But what about him? This is not in the Holy Hill in South Carolina. This is, I should be taken there, but it's also, I was taken in the Rwanda and Burundi after the genocide of the 800,000 people which I have seen to the people what's happening there or on the streets of Cairo. Another way of the poverty for me is how we could bring the small child becoming the soldiers. You see this 11 years old Cambodian boy walking with the guns that is bigger than him. Chung, the little boy. His body language tells everything about the humanity. But this was the moment which I really got one of the hardest moments in the war. This little girl in Afghanistan, was village was bombed, and she was just after lost her home and maybe all family member sitting there and thinking about it. This was for me one of the toughest moments to see how we bring a little child becoming like a 60 years old person and what did she think about it? So this is what brought me to think about everything, about what are the roots of the poverty. I'm an architect by trainings, so I go deep in the foundation of the everything to find out what is the roots of the poverty. And that's what I, one of my researches brought me to read Eisenhower's books, The President of the U.S. One of his speech, he was talking about the the main roots of the poverty actually is what he was telling about us, that every gun that we make it, and we make a lot of guns, much more than what you see here. Every warship that we launched, ah, yeah. we, have, we have launching a lot of warships, so you see that's what's happening here, or every rocket that we fire. You know, how many hundreds of thousands of rockets that I have seen fired, and I have seen all these destructions happening. As a matter of fact, I still have some of them in my hands here, the result of this. But we use all those things by, by thefts from the people who are hungered and need those monies for them. When I find myself in front of him, or maybe he or she, what I find out, that she was questioning us. What 
what was happening in her mind was, I know that you can move tens of thousands of the military in one day from one place to others. I know that you can move tens of thousands of the tanks and everything from one place to others, and you can't move the food for me. I know that you have drones, the drones that deliver deaths. Why you don't use those drones to deliver life for me? You can't, maybe you should think of the drones that bring food for me also. These are the main the roots of the poverty that I'm thinking about it. Or I have seen this Le Petit Prince, this little prince. He, all his life, he was standing there. This is his life was there. And for me, he is the major person that brings us to think about a, a global dignity programs, thinking that this is what we should do about him, the dignity that he is showing about it. So everything that we do, it's a tip from the who are cold and people that they are living in a very tough places. These are the places, those pictures are pictures which I have been, I have seen there, I have taken there. It is not taken from the internet. These are the moments which I have lived through it. So I know what I'm talking about it. And when I see the, all this, all over the world full of the arms, you know, every empire, Roman, Greeks, Persian empire, they have left ruins. Is it going, this is going to be the ruins of our empires? We have left all our divorce guns and machine guns and everything. This is what we're using our money for it. This is where we put all our energy on it. And this is what we are not spending the money only making those things, but also that's what we are doing. We are getting the sweaters of our labors, productions. Everything is gone for this. Another thing that we, we don't understand about it, it's that our best laboratories, our best scientific, they are working for the militaries. But they are not working for the education. They are not working for the health. They are working for the militaries. And we are putting all our energy for this. So, but what about our children? We are spending, by, by making those guns, the hopes of our children too. I, I heard that one, one day saying that the only measure of understanding uh, uh, what is the best way of the understanding what uh, the quality of a civilization is understand how much they are putting in the education of their children, of all their budgets. And this is what we do with our children. So I just think about it, well, I, we know how much we need in the World Bank, we can understand it, how much we need to get the, out of the poverty, but what is the cost of the war? You know, while I'm talking now, just my talk, five million dollars has gone to the war. And the, this morning that we will talk about it, it will be 105 million dollars spending on the wars. Is it not enough to end poverty? So, ending war is the ending poverty for me because I have been in the war zones for a long time to see what is the destructions happening. Not only destructions of the buildings, but destructions of the humanity and our cultures. But what else I can do without it? Well, how I can make as a photographer and going for this? So I created all this uh, NGOs organization, making the magazine for the Afghan women, and making this, uh, all these happenings in the uh, mobile cinema in Afghanistan. Uh, one of our students got the Pulitzer Prize, actually, but not only in Afghanistan, but also we do in the Europe, all over the world, in refugee camps. So this is all I'm trying to bring all together and putting this exile voices. is a new project which I'm working on it. For five years, I will be going in the refugee camps. This is a Syrian refugee child that you see. But I'm not only Photographing, I'm also teaching them, and this is my classrooms, actually. This is my classrooms in the Syrian refugee camps. And one of them, after one day, uh, when she was late, I said, why you are late? She showed me the pictures, saying, this is my shoes. My shoes was frozen. That's what I'm late to the classrooms. So that's what I'm trying to make this, all this happen, creating the connection between humanities. So art, yes, is a solution for this, but more than art, the heart is a solution. Just 
Give your heart to the humanity, and you will see that all the humanities will be jumped up. Thank you very much.